morning. Another beautiful fall morning. Today's our last warm day probably of the year. It's supposed to be, I think, 80 again today. It's going to drop off a cliff. From what they're saying after that, it's supposed to drop to the 60s and in the 30s at night. I love this time of year. Absolutely my favorite. This is the... I sometimes miss growing up in Maine. It was a beautiful environment. Uh, I was a fat kid who never really got outside the house when I got to be now like 10 ish or so before that we played outside a lot but i just really got lazy as i got older and computers became more of a thing and uh, video games yes i'm so old that they weren't really a thing back when i was a young kid but yeah, i just love this time of year See, it is beautiful and it's funny i was thinking the other day how much i had so much more time when I was a little kid and just there was less to do there was less to fill it with uh, I was an avid reader but even so like we just did more like outside stuff especially when I was young and especially in the winter time winter was a big thing in Maine winter was a very long thing in Maine uh, it felt like six months of the year but I remember just putting on a snowsuit and tromping around and being out there for hours and I don't know how we did it. Like, I'm old and I'm very temperature sensitive now and creaky. But, you know, man, kids run hot. It's awesome. And I remember just being in my snowsuit or bibs or whatever and going out and playing around in the snow and just sitting in a snow pile and just watching the snow fall. And I recall long periods of just quiet and not even thinking, I mean, maybe daydreaming, but really just, just the quiet that... A lot of us chase now, you know, trying to schedule in 20 minutes for a meditation. Uh, oh, that's too long. 10 minutes, maybe. Just trying to sit there and quiet your mind. I remember just having long periods of just sitting there, watching the snowfall, not thinking, just just being. I really miss that. I would say I'm going to try and incorporate that more, but we haven't got a whole lot of snowfall in New Jersey in the last decade or so. It's been a couple of years, but... Prior to that, I feel like there was some several really good years of snow, but not been much lately. But either way, I'm old, I'm creaky, I'm temperature sensitive, I'm not going to sit there in the snow. I'm going to feel guilty and rushed. And that's just, uh, I think some of that's being an adult. I think some of that is the crazy lifestyle we live nowadays. But yeah, trying not to feel too burdened and put upon and guilty for not doing stuff like that. And... I was thinking also, so I took the last week off uh, from dieting, just chilled and getting myself prepared for a more focused diet and exercise for the next, uh, eh, basically through the end of the year. And man, I am able to self-sabotage with the best of them. So as I've said, I used to be a lot heavier. I've gone through multiple periods of up and down, but I've spent the last... Uh, I guess seven, eight, nine years now. Yeah, I guess nine coming up on ten years. Getting more and more disciplined about what I eat, how I eat, uh, how I exercise. And it's been a long, slow, incremental journey. But in the last year, I've gotten down to my leanest I've ever been. And I really want to try for visible abs by Christmas, or at least by the end of the year. And this last week off, man, taking the reins off and saying, it's okay, you can chill. We're going get to on, on, get on it harder in the week. Did you know you can put on five and a half pounds in a week? And I guarantee you, it wasn't all water weight. There's definitely some fat, a fair portion of fat there. So, backing off the exercise and the diet is not a good thing for me. And I was literally like, by three quarters of the way through the week, just, man, I just want to eat healthy again. I just want to eat salad and stuff. Um, so, that's a good sign. That's, to me, that means I'm not overly diet fatigued, that I uh, do have good habits now, and I do enjoy eating well for myself and supporting myself with food and exercise. But man, old, lazy, gluttonous me is still in there, and I got to keep an eye on that guy. The, the instinct to, like, binge and then feel horrible and guilty and self give myself you know 
self-recriminations, just, you know, just, what are you doing, kind of thing. That's something I fight against, too. And I think it is an interesting experiment to take the reins off every now and again, see where you're at, see if you still have those compulsions, see how far they go, see how you react to it. Kind of like, I'm not a big fan of competition, but I am now probably doing it once to twice a year because I don't like the whole process. But seeing how you handle it and seeing the feelings come up, I think is very worthwhile. And I feel like this is kind of the same idea. Uh, a little less beneficial. But it's good to know where I'm at. And it's good to know that, hey, yep, I'm just going to I'm gonna get back on the path. I'm not going to give myself too much shit about it. And I'm just going to continue with the plan. And the weight will come off. And, you know, it's laws of thermodynamics. You know, more output, less input has an effect. But I'm really looking forward to the next uh, five, six weeks. Uh, really, depending on how far I get, I might go out through the full 10-week plan. But I'm, I'm thinking probably five weeks to be enough, and then I'll start a maintenance and or building phase during the cold months because... Yeah, I don't want to be running at a calorie deficit and feeling miserable when it's frigid out. I want to be, you know, a slight caloric increase and, and working hard and keep myself warm, honestly. And who cares if you get a little pudgy uh, when you're wearing sweaters and stuff. That's what springtime is for, to, to remove some of that fluff and feel good in the summer. But I'm looking forward to this new mode of exercise. I've done a whole lot of different things. Uh, my diet's pretty under control. I'm, I've got a little bit higher carbs with the plan I'm doing now, um, but it's standing me in good stead as long as I'm exercising. It's not doing anything crazy. Um, I've had other periods where I tried to have higher carbs and it didn't do well for me, but I think I'm in a better place mentally and physically now, so it's working out well. But the exercise, I've done a whole bunch of different things, um, and I've done nothing. I've done... Uh, whatever the military prescribed, which is a crap ton of running and then heavy rucking or hiking with a heavy backpack, uh, and then pull-ups and just not a whole lot of other useful stuff. Like it's funny, you want to be big and strong and you want to have really good power to weight ratio in the military, but the exercises they require of you every day, the stuff they put you through, if you're not doing extra stuff on your own, it does not support that. At least when I was in crap ton of running, some calisthenics, um, push-ups, pull-ups, but very little weight training. And I think that was a big missing component for me for a very long time because I never had it modeled because I didn't go to school. I was homeschooled. Didn't have sports, didn't have any kind of base or background. So I didn't do great in the military. Um, I was a very mediocre Marine, as I like to tell myself, because I was generally middle to back of the pack or even the, the very last guy on the run because um, I had no physical base and I didn't know how to push myself and I'd never been exposed to it and it was a, just a culture shock and I was catching up for four years but since then I've done a lot of different things and in the last since I had done a whole lot of cardio again uh, when I got divorced I uh, was living out of my car for a few months so to shower I would go to the gym and if I wanted to watch TV I'd be at the gym and I would work out in the morning and the evening. I was doing a shit ton of cardio because that's what I knew. And some small amount of screwing around with weight machines and free weights and didn't know what I was doing. But it was something. Then got into my early midlife crisis, if, if you will, when I started exploring new things. Once I started stopped drinking, started trying to improve myself. I tried yoga. I tried um, getting back into running. Hate running. Didn't do that for long. Uh then got jujitsu and ran just jujitsu for a very long time, which does help you get weight off. Um, it can help you if you're very overweight. It can help you get a lot more fit than you were. It's a great thing, but it takes a physical toll on the body, especially as you're getting older. I started in my mid-30s, and now I'm in my early 40s, and it hurts. Uh, it takes a toll, and you have to do other things to build your body to support your ability to do jujitsu or anything else in life. And for me, that means I needed to add on a lot of weight. I got pretty good at dieting down, and you know I was active with jujitsu and whatever stuff. 
So just before the pandemic, I dropped down into the last time that I was in the 160s. I was like 169-ish, um, just like pinging off the top of the 160s, which is the lightest I'd ever been in as an adult. It was lighter than I was coming out of boot camp. And I felt like I was coming apart at the seams. And I was very skinny fat. I was very smooth and soft looking, even though just a smaller size, stack size. But luckily with the pandemic, I had picked up a kettlebell just before and I had access to used brake rotors at work. So I took those and some cement and I made um, some really janky homemade weight plates and picked up a thick pipe at Home Depot and made a barbell out of it. And with those and the great addition of some professional instruction from uh, Katia Silva, she's Joe's personal instructor. I picked her up as a uh, personal instructor during uh, the pandemic. I've gone through a couple of periods where I just couldn't afford to, to do it. And I had, you know, I had a new car I had to pay for, other things came up. But I've worked with Katia a couple times now and money very well spent. If you have the money in your budget to pay for a personal instructor, personal coaching, find a good personal coach if you want to make advancement in anything, whether it's physical fitness, uh, skills in jiu-jitsu, mental skills for jiu-jitsu, anything. Um, spend it on therapy if you need to work through some stuff from your past. Valid use as well. But it's worth paying a professional money to jump way ahead and actually get some results and learn how to do things rather than puddling around on your own and not getting anywhere. And so that was basically strength training. Uh, I had done a little bit of that before um, before I started jiu-jitsu. I trained at a powerlifting gym. Uh, they did private training there. That was ultra expensive. That was ridiculous. But we weren't in a house yet, so I had a little extra cash. Uh, but while it did get me a fair bit stronger, uh, it was incomplete. I never was able to do an unsupported squat. Um, they only did box squats because it was an easy thing to train people on, and you didn't have to worry about them dumping and failing. And I developed a lot of imbalances, and I didn't get any information on recovery and how to take care of my body. And I, on one hand, it was a good experience. On the other hand, it took me a while after that to fix myself up from it. So this time around, Kadi was much more holistic and the results were way better. Uh, coming back to jujitsu after the pandemic, I could actually back up the things that I was doing as I've talked about before. And that was awesome. Then I've done periods where I've been on my own. I've done kettlebell training during lunch times. That's a great way just to get exercise in, keep yourself fit. You can make some gains. I've had some pretty good success with it. i um, doing it a couple of different times now, especially this last summer. I, I made some pretty good strength gains doing it and cut a lot of weight. But it's not very friendly in the cold. So now I'm getting back into the basement. And instead of strength training alone this time, I'm really going more for hypertrophy, trying to get the physique I want because uh, I'm vain. And I've never had it, and I want to have it before I'm too old to really get a choice about it. And also just it, you get to use a lot lighter weights for much higher reps, and it's less damaging to all the other tissue around you. You're, you're supposed to damage your muscle. That's going to hurt. I've, I've got... Doms right now, delayed onset muscle syndrome or soreness, but my joints feel good, and I hope to continue doing that where you're not overstressing your connective tissue with the heavy, heavy weights. Uh, strength training, you, you train much more intensely with really heavy weights at very low rep sets, like up, you know, around five. Whereas with bodybuilding, you're going to be in the five to thirty, depending on what exercise it is range, and it's lighter weights. It's much more about getting muscular burn uh, just to force the muscle to be damaged so it has to rebuild bigger. And I'll go back to strength training eventually, but for now, this is it's a fun, exciting change, so I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, that's about it for me. I uh, just really want to talk to myself about that inner me and where we're at, how easy it is to kind of step off the path and how... Um, off the rails can go in a very short period of time, but also being aware that, hey, those base instincts are there. They're always going to be there. How much you let up on the reins 
is up to you. And it's okay. It's okay, one way or the other. Just choose the life you want to live. Give yourself a pressure relief every now and again, and it's good to go. So I don't know if that uh, speaks to anybody else out there, but um, yeah, give yourself some pressure relief every now and again, and then get back on the path. Be the person you want to be. All right, I'll talk to you all later. Take care.